back to working on the C10. This time, I believe the alternator went out, the battery stopped charging, and I was driving, noticed the gauge lights were dimming, came back home immediately, checked the battery, and it was at 8 volts. So, definitely not charging. Now, my thought behind it being just a bad alternator and not like bad wiring, anything like that, because to get the alternator out of that bracket that it was stuck in, I had to torch it and heat it up like crazy. So, I wouldn't be surprised if I just melted the insides of that alternator. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but before I pull it out, we can do some tests to just make sure we have all the connections set up. So, let's run through that. So, even without a battery being in there, I'm going to hook directly up to the negative cable. And then I got my meter in continuity mode. So, as you hear, we do have continuity. We are making connection from the battery negative to here. And then, just going to keep testing around on this bracket. Um, now, this is a painted bracket. So, we'll have to find some spots where it's not painted in order to find this continuity. There's a spot. Uh, here's a metal bolt down here to this bracket. That one's good. Um, and then the alternator itself should have um, a ground as well. On the back side here, the back bolt, this is the ground for the alternator. And that does have continuity, so the alternator case is being grounded. Now the other thing to check for is make sure your connections are good. So on the back side, I just pulled it out, but this is a three wire alternator, so it has that connection there, and then um, what's called the B plus post, where it's just one wire with a nut onto the stud, and then of course your ground connection, where it connects to that bracket that attaches to the head. But everything's solid, and like I said, I'm pretty certain it is the alternator since I did burn it with a torch, so I think my next step rather than just wasting time and hooking the battery up and checking that it outputs a voltage or anything I think it's just safe to just throw a new alternator in plus a new alternator will look nice since everything else looks nice in here that will really look nice and they're not too expensive okay so let's pull the alternator off first off we want to loosen it so I'm just going to loosen the two mounting bolts I can take this one out all the way. So this is a long through bolt. Alright, new, old. Um, the photo had the pulley actually being black. I thought black actually would have looked really good. But this is okay. This does look a whole lot better. Everything matches up terminal wise. Even comes with new nuts. Um, and then our plug connection is the same, so we should be good to just throw this in there. Okay, new alternator is in. Wires are plugged in. It's all tight, uh, tensioned appropriately. Uh, this belt is kind of getting a little old, so maybe I need to get a new belt, but that's for the future. But the belt, or the alternator looks good in there. Everything's good, so let's hook up the battery, see if it charges. So we are running, but uh, interesting when I rev it, no more rattling noise. So that was actually the alternator rally, not the power steering pump. Interesting. However, we are not charging. Still got a diagnosis. Okay, so did some research, kind of figured out this three wire system. So the B plus terminal, the one with the stud and the nut, that I have my meter connected up to ground. I'm checking for voltage, so I'm touching the stud, the B plus terminal, and I have battery voltage. Now on this two wire connector, the top one, if I connect it in there, by back probing, nothing, no voltage. The bottom one, I get battery voltage. So the way it works is the terminal and the output, this is the one that gets fused in line to the starter. The top one, number one here on the plug, it's really hard to see. Uh, number one is the sensing wire, so key on, this powers up. 
This is what tells the alternator to turn on. Bottom one is a uh, always powered battery. So you're gonna have two powers that are always on. The top one of the two wire connector is only on key on. And then of course your ground, so your case should be grounded. So we can check that by continuity to the case and we do have continuity. So now all the wires hooked up when the keys in the on position I do have that key on power now it's just a matter of checking resistance because it, it needs to see a certain load in order to actually kick on and so for checking for resistance on that sensing wire we do have resistance and that doesn't seem too over the top or anything so far everything is checking out um, now what would be the odds that I just got a bad alternator. All right, so I threw in the battery that was in the Corvette because I know it's a good battery. I just revved the engine to get it above two grand and let it sit there. So the alternator will kick on once it gets above about 1500, 2000 RPMs. So that's what I did. I mainly did that to get it to engage and now we're charging. I think so the sensing wire should be all hooked up. Everything should be working because I haven't touched anything like that. I wonder if this belt is maybe too loose and the alternator is not spinning enough at idle. I don't know. But either way, after kicking it on and essentially just driving it for a second, we are now charging. That is fantastic. So let's throw in the old battery and make sure that old battery can charge as well. You know, it could be that the battery has a bad cell and it just won't accept the charge in it. So we need to, we need to test that. All right, the original truck battery's back in. We're at 12.17. Yeah, this is ideally supposed to be 12.5, 12.6 in a perfect world. Um, usually when one cell goes bad, I see it go to about 11.6. Uh, so let's see We'll charge it up see if the battery holds that charge and see if the alternator will output the charge with this battery Okay trucks running And we're still we're we're going up a little bit But you know it should be 13 to 14 So I'm gonna do what I did last time. I'll just rev it now. This would be as if you were taking off and driving going up a little bit okay we are still just about the same it is not coming up I'm gonna throw the old battery in again just to double check but that is strange that it is the battery that is preventing it from charging okay so we're still 12.2 maybe that makes it better I, I don't understand. I don't see why it's not kicking on a 13, 14 volts for the alternator. So here on the dash, let me turn these on. So watch the amps, this ammeter. When I give it gas, we are moving. So this ammeter is working. Now the ammeter really doesn't have much to do with the alternator working whether it does or not but it is moving we are pulling amps but we're still just not giving it back to the battery i don't know what are the odds i just got a defective alternator and it did work for a split second with the with the other battery in here but i swapped it back in and it no go never happened again I don't think it's the the wire that kicks it on because I'm getting 12 volts on the key and I have I don't know I, I have everything the alternator needs but it's just not doing the charging but it's also not dropping down drastic at all which is very strange um, and yes I check for a voltage coming out of the alternator on the stud on the B plus terminal 
same, I'm getting battery voltage. I just spent the last two hours driving around town, picking up a new alternator in the Corvette. So, the Corvette did great. I had to put the carburetor back on that I stole for the truck and so on, so on. But Corvette ran great. Now we have a new warrantied alternator because I believe the issue was the alternator. But I also have the battery that was in the Corvette because I know it's good. It's giving me 12.6 volts. So, battery's good. This alternator should be good. The wiring hasn't changed at all. Let's see what it does. Cross my fingers. I forgot, I never raised the cold idle, so it's struggling to run, but we are charging. We have 13 volts, that is great. I'm gonna let it warm up so it gets off the cold idle, then I'm gonna throw in the new battery. And speaking of, I should be putting the old battery on a charger real quick, so let me do that. All right, truck battery in, watch the amps. So I'm gonna give it a rev. So you see it does go over to charging and it is on the charging side right now. Let's check our voltmeter. We are charging, but we're not even at 13 volts. I think this battery died. I don't think this battery can handle a charge. We are right at 13 volts now. I'm hooked up directly to the B plus terminal on the alternator, it's the output. Um, so I don't have any voltage drop, but the voltage I'm getting there is the same as the cable, so it's not a cable issue. But, yep, 13 volts seems to be the best I can get. When I rev it up, it definitely goes up. I, I can't tell what it actually is, but I see the charging go up, so I know the voltage is actually going up. Um, but when I shut it off, it immediately drops past 12.5, and it just keeps going to like 12.3, 12.2. So I, I think there's something wrong with this battery, but 13 is enough to get by if you really had to. So let me put the headlights on. Let's give some electrical load and see what happens. So there's that. Let's do the radio as well. And 12 to, so that's not enough to charge your battery. So. We do, in fact, have an issue still. I, I think I have to chalk this down to just a bad battery. So when I rev it, it goes to charging, but our voltage is, it's almost below 12. So yeah, well that's an issue, that's a problem. I think it's time to call it, let's get a new battery and see if that solves it. All right, picked up a new battery. Uh, this time I did not get the top post because one last thing to worry about, don't want it touching the hood and shorting out, causing a fire. Uh, so I prefer the side post, you know, GM. So let's run it, let's check the voltage. And 14.3 volts. So it was a bad battery causing the alternator not to charge. And that just about blows my mind. Okay, so a rundown of how this GM 3-wire alternator works. On the back side, there's a plug with two terminals in it. And then there's the stud with the nut uh, for the bigger BAT cable. It's the B plus terminal. B battery positive, basically. Uh, and then the case itself is the ground. So if your case has ground, if the second plug in that two plug terminal or two plug connector uh, the one to the bottom is two top is one one two easy to understand that second one should have battery voltage all the time key on or key off the b plus stud terminal that should have battery voltage all time the first pin on that two pin connector should have key on power. Now that key on power also needs a load on it. Typically that would be the dummy light or the idiot light inside of the ga dash gauge area. Uh, that's basically when you turn the engine on, that gen light or the battery light will come on and then it'll turn off once the alternator kicks on. Uh, if your truck doesn't have that, 
then you're gonna have some sort of combination of a resistor and a diode. The diode is just kind of a filter, so current can go one way, but it can't come back. You don't want it coming back, because otherwise the alternator is gonna continue running the engine. You'll never be able to turn it off with your ignition. So that is important to either have that light or a diode resistor combo. So if you have those three things plus ground, and you're still not getting voltage at the B plus stud on the alternator, the backside stud, chances are either your alternator is bad or if you're very unlucky like me, it's a bad battery. Now, how did I come to the conclusion that it was a bad battery? You can see we're still at 12.9, so just discharging very slowly like a normal battery would. My old battery that was in here, the max I could get it was 12.2. Now right off the bat, it should be like 12.6, 12.2 is too low. Now the reason why I wasn't getting that 13, 14 volts from the alternator output, I'm pretty sure it has to do with V equals IR. So I didn't change any of the wiring at all. The resistance in that equation should stay the same. The current demand would have gone down from a weak battery and if current goes down, I goes down, and R stays the same, V will go down, volts. I, I think that's the mathematical way to prove what just happened. Now, I did have the truck battery tested at AutoZone, and of course, it tested perfectly fine. And so did the old alternator that I had in here. And everything tested fine, but clearly it wasn't working. Now, those testers that they have at the auto parts stores, I don't think they really do a good job of a load test or um, checking for any weak cells in the battery. It could be there's a cell in the battery that's just weak and it can't pull current like everything else can. Or that cell could have a short in it and it's just failing. I think that's what was going on and I think that would be the mathematical, mathematical reasoning behind why that alternator wasn't giving me output. It was just the battery wasn't signaling the alternator give enough volts. And also, if you know alternators in cars, you can get as many amp output of an alternator as you want, a big alternator. If your car or truck only needs, uh, say, 30 volt, 30 amps to run, I have a six, this is a 63 amp alternator. I could put a 100 amp or a 120 amp alternator but it's only going to output how many amps that the battery demands. And if you follow the circuit of this, the schematic, that B plus terminal output goes down and it kind of does a loop around to the battery junction, which is right here. There's a fusible link, so you want to make sure that fusible link is good. Otherwise, you're not going to get battery positive to your alternator and then vice versa. So if that's good, that battery junction then goes down to the starter. There's a fusible link by the starter as well. And if that's good, it makes it way back up to the battery. A lot going on here, but ultimately, in this case, it was just a bad battery. And it's a tricky one because all the tests said it worked, but it clearly did not. Now you're probably asking, was that original alternator that I started this whole thing off with before the first reman one, was that one good? I don't know. It probably was. It probably was just a bad battery this whole time. But we also found out the pulley or the bearing in that pulley was bad. So either way, a new alternator kind of solved the problem. Plus the new alternator looks really good in here compared to everything else. Wish the pulley is black, but it's okay. So I guess at the end of the day, having a new alternator, not the end of the world. It's actually a very good thing. It got rid of my rattling noise. So... <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. And then new battery, of course I went with a very expensive three year warranty one. Normally I just get the one years, but I want to keep this truck. And I have horrible luck with batteries, so figured if I can get the longest warranty I can, that should help, right? So I'm gonna end it here. That was a lot going on and a lot of thinking and my brain hurts. So I need to recover from all this thinking. What a crazy turn of events, but Hope you enjoyed, hope you watched the whole way through. Hope you got something out of it, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.